What's up, creepers? Hey, Kickers, Chris, the Atari Creep. How's everyone doing today? You know, I don't try to be the breaking news kind of guy, but, you know, with the recent interest and rise in these retro pre-NES game systems trying to make their triumphant comeback, it, it's, as excited as I am about it, it's like, it's just so weird to me. It's just weird to me. I I understand that some of this, especially like the Intellivision, is going to be done for love. And essentially what they're trying to do is just use the name. As if, you know, like, I mean, you had the NES and the Super NES and, you know, then you had the N64. So it's like the same brand name, but the consoles were different. That's what Intellivision is doing. They're just It's just another Intellivision console. You know, they made one. I mean, technically, if you look at the variants, they made a handful of them. But you know what I'm talking about, okay? Well, it looks like the name Coleco is coming back. And I know I know right away that's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And that one reptilian Coleco, um, that's all I'm going to say, is going to be talked about a lot here. But a good buddy of mine, and we've been talking about him a lot lately... Uh, Canadian Zan Keefe asked me, he's like, hey, have you heard anything about this HDMI ColecoVision? And I'm like, no, I haven't. <laughs> I have not. So on a whim today, uh, well, actually, it wasn't even a whim. I got something on my news feed um, on Facebook. So I clicked on it. I found the website here in front of me on the old computer. Um, it's being headed up by collector vision games which if i'm not mistaken mr gamester 81 has a big share in that i don't know um and i know he has said and i've, I've talked to him personally um that the clico vision is his number one favorite console it's the one he grew up with and that's what he's most nostalgic for though he of course he collects everything else but the clico is his baby so they're talking about coming out with another clico vision and they're not trying to do what, say, Intellivision and Atari are doing by creating a new console that will also satisfy your itch for the old stuff. Um, so far, we're going to look at this, and maybe that'll change here in a minute. But it's looking like, from what I just gazed over, it's just going to be an HDMI ColecoVision that you can use cartridges. Um, they're claiming 100% compatibility. Um, of course, new games that come out, like that Sydney Hunter or whatever it is, um, we'll work in and stuff like that. So fuck, fuck what I'm saying. No, I'm talking. Let me reset up the camera so you can see my computer screen here because I don't have capture crap because I'm not cool like that. And um, we'll have a look at this, and we'll uh, surmise a a judgment right away because that's what we do, right? We're gamers. We judge things instantly before we even have it in our hands. So let me just get this set up. So here we go, and as usual. Excuse the crude setup. Uh, it's just the way we roll here at the Creep Farm. And I got this on a goofy little tripod on a box, so there's a good chance this camera's going to get knocked over. Three, four, or eleven teen times. Who knows? Okay, so we are here at CollectorVisionGames.com. The link is over here on the right somewhere. You'll see it if you want to follow along. I briefed through it. There's a lot of tech specs that not only do I not care about, you can read about those on your own, so we're not going to go through that, but I haven't really read most of this, so let's figure this out ourselves together. Collector Vision Phoenix Video Game Systems, trademark, okay, Kickstarter coming soon. Now, that's right there. That's going to be everyone's first gripe, but you know what? Que sera, sera. I made a whole video about it. I understand it's necessary in a lot of cases these days, so, you know, you got to raise money for your thing, and that's the modern way to do it, I guess, so let me move that over a little. And uh, just in case you are a journalist or a YouTuber, feel free to email them with any questions or concerns. I have a fucking bunch of concerns, but we'll, we'll leave that for later. Um, maybe I'm reading way too much into this. It's, they're calling it the Phoenix. Gamester is from the Arizona area. I won't tell you where, but he lived in the town that I also lived in when I was there before I moved back here to Boston. And there's a big city there called Phoenix. Maybe they're just talking about the uprise. You know what the Phoenix is. The uprise of the the rebirth of the console. Maybe he's just naming it that because he loves Phoenix, Arizona. I could be reading way too much into it. So, either way, that's what it's called. 
So here's the console itself. Let's see if we can't expand on this thing. Here we go. Look at that. Um, it basically looks exactly like the original, just probably a much smaller scale. Um, they got another image here, and this one looks like some kind of actual working prototype, and that's pretty cool. I like that. Now, it's my understanding that this may have been in development a little, you know, for a little while now. I'm just kind of, you know, slow on the upchuck for this thing, but well, there you go. If that's what you want to look at. I did notice, though, here, let me bring this one back up. Let me bring this one back up. If you look right here, there's a couple of buttons. It almost looks like arcade buttons. And I'm pretty sure those are going to be for some kind of like resets or something like that. I don't know. Um, but I'm not seeing the normal doohickeys here on the side. Uh, I'm seeing what looks like a PS2 connector in the front. The old keyboard connectors. I don't know. Uh, it does say keyboard underneath it. So, and your DB9 controller ports, SD slot, and a little bit of a uh, a gleaming light bulb. So that's pretty cool. Looks like there's also going to be an expansion slot in the side. So let's move on. Here's a nice artist conceptual drawing of it. Nice looking system. Again, it looks just like the old one. Just probably a lot smaller. Um, yeah, so, okay, moving on. The only ColecoVision system you will ever need. So there you go. If you ever needed one, this is the only one that you need. An FPGA... ColecoVision compatible system. So they're not calling it a ColecoVision, obviously, because they probably can't. Um, okay, moving on. Oh, okay, so we have our dimensions and stuff over here on the left. So let's just move that over. So it looks like it's going to be seven and a half by, say, four inches by almost two inches. So probably about the same size as your ColecoVision uh, flashback, give or take, you know. Technical specifications, blank, empty, nothing there. Uh, compatibility, compatible with all ColecoVision game cartridges. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's 100% accurate. Okay. Region-free and worldwide capability. Um, and whatever these goofy numbers are, there you go. For the guys who like goofy numbers. Uh, it's going to be HDMI out for both digital and video, which would make sense. Special features, F-18A, what is this, a fighter jet? Uh, enhanced capability built in, ooh, $86 value. Uh, SGM capability built in. I don't know what that is, so go ahead and tell me down in the comments below what SGM is. Uh, but it's a $100 value there. So now we're already talking $200 bucks right here. Um, well, original style, okay, with the DB9 controller ports. Uh, original Coleco, see, I need to... I don't know if it's any collector or ColecoVision. I know I'm going to say those backwards a lot, but it's going to have the original cartridge port, which I would hope. Original style SNES Super Famicom controller ports for even more controller capability. NTT data compatible. I Again, I don't know what that is, so go ahead and let me know down the bottom, the NTT. But it's saying that's going to have the original. I mean, if you look at the picture, it's got the DB9s. Where are the, I don't know. I don't know what any of this SNES controller stuff is, but that's that's actually kind of interesting. I don't know what the deal with that is. So are they going to have two sets of controller ports? Is it like a, a, a something that you can use to like connect to it? It's like a, a I don't want to call it a coupler, but uh, you know the word I'm talking about. Something you can plug into something normal to make it turn into something else. <laughs> I can't think right now. SD card firmware updating via SD slot. That makes sense, too. PS2 keyboard input. Yep, I saw that. Now, <laughs> it looks like they're offering sex from someone named Courtney. So, you know what? Any console that's offering any kind of sex, I don't care what the girl's name is. That That's, that's fine with me. So, this is going to be all tech stuff. Uh, native mode, which features... Wavable synthesis, the same sound technology of the Konami SCC Namco Pac-Man. So it's going to have basically an arcade quality sound setup, 100% compatible with the AY38913. So I'm going to encourage you to go to the link. I'll put the link to this down below if I think about it. 
I'm going to encourage you to go down there and read all this stuff. I'm not going to because I don't know what half of this crap is. What do I care? All right, so it includes, here's what the, the system's going to include. It's going to include the game system, which, okay. Uh, Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death, exclusive pack-in game cartridge. So they're going to have a special variant of the Sydney Hunter game for this, which is pretty cool. You know, I, I kind of wanted to get it when it came out. And there was a couple of different variants that I wouldn't mind getting. You know, like the, the red cartridge was pretty cool. I just didn't have money for it. That's the usual story with the creep. But um, I've watched video on all the different ports, and the game looks fun. So I'm glad I'm glad they're they're tossing that in there. What a great game. It, it looks fun as fuck to play. Oh, plus it'll have five built-in digital homebrews. So that's that's cool, too. Who knows what those are going to be? You Coleco guys could probably speculate better than me. So let me know. It's going to have an instruction manual. That's always good to have, I guess. An HDMI cable. Worldwide. USB power supply. So it's going to come with your little little wall wart with the USB, blah, blah, blah. And your typical megahertz and vegahertz and doohickeys and gigawatts, whatever. US, USA and Japan type plugs. All right. Expansion module port. Okay, good, 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 good. A variety of expansion modules will be released after the console's launch. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. More information on these will be provided later. Okay, I'm down with that. Uh, but will it work with the original ones? That's 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 what I'd like to know. Like the 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 uh, module one, the Atari twenty six hundred adapter. Uh, adapter. That's the word I was looking for earlier. An adapter for the controller parts ports. Uh, okay, load ROM files from SD card available for homebrew developers to test their creations, i.e., homebrew games. Okay, sounds fair enough. Collectivision Games and Inc. does not condone. Uh, so this is to cover my ass kind of statement. Does not condone or promote piracy. Please purchase original games to support the game developers and companies when possible. So basically, they're putting the SD card in it so you can load ROMs, but they're telling you not to because it's not ethical. So good on them. Uh, Collector Vision Phoenix video game system is made and manufactured by Collector Vision Games Inc. It is a trademark of Coleco Holdings. So Coleco is actually whoever they are now. Is actually involved in this, so I guess that's pretty cool. Oh, ColecoVision is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel like an idiot. Go ahead and tell me I'm an idiot down below. Um, they're just saying that the Coleco name is owned by them. Uh, Collective Vision Phoenix Video Game System is a trademark of Collective Vision Games. Okay, so they're they're separating the two. They're they're again legal stuff. They're separating the two. Good for them. Frequently. Oh, here we go. Frequently asked questions. What is your target? Two hundred dollars. I guess that covers the value up above. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm not going to puke too much on that price. I think, I think if it does what they say it's going to do and it's going to be expandable and all kinds of stuff, I think I, two hundred dollars isn't bad for the, for those who are really into this. Now, I personally wouldn't pay two hundred dollars for one of these, only because the Coleco isn't really my my main thing. If it if it were my love, maybe so. Um, but 200 seems a little high for your average kind of, oh, okay, yeah, I remember the Coleco. It was pretty cool. Uh, but for the hardcore, I can see that being very reasonable. It sounds it sounds reasonable to me anyway. Uh, it's expensive for a ColecoVision console. <laughs> well, yeah, duh. Okay, here we go. Well, we understand it may not be a, uh, for everybody out there. We also think there are more than enough ColecoVision fans out there willing to to make a project like this happen. Of course there are. It wouldn't be happening if it didn't. For any of you naysayers out there, go check out the um, crowdfunding for the Atari box. See where that ended up. Being in the community for more than 10 years now, Collective Vision knows the potential and needs for the console like this to happen. So, okay, what they're basically just saying here is they could have made it a little more expensive, but they've been in the game for a while. They understand what is actually necessary and what's needed and what's on the minds of ColecoVision fans, and they're working around that to get the price to where it is. All right, good for them. I've been saying that a lot, haven't I? Will it come with any new controllers? Well, of course it should. No. Okay, okay, no. It won't come with new controllers. So they're going to pack it with old controllers? We prefer to focus... That was a fucking joke. Don't comment down below. They wouldn't do that. We prefer to focus first and foremost on the console itself and make it completely right, which is what you should do. Although the console is already cap capable, uh, compatible with the, yeah, I can't read. 
I can't see the screen through the fucking camera. Uh, compatible with the original ColecoVision the controllers and the DB9 controllers out there. They even have support. Okay, we already know that. So, no controllers. That's interesting. Uh, are you ever going to make controllers? Well, definitely. Definitely. Well, you we should at the beginning. We're going to start design a brand new, comfortable, reliable controller as soon as the console is available. That, as soon as the console is available. I don't know if I like those words. I think to do it right, you need to take your time, get the console up and going, make the controllers and... What's the most important part of a game system? Any AVGA angry video game nerd fan, tell me. What is the answer? The controller. Being able to control the game. I mean, I know you have your options, but... <sighs> okay. All right. Does the Collector Vision Phoenix video game system in any way affiliated with Coleco Holdings? No. Okay. They. I think they pretty much tried to establish that early when they were differentiating the two company names. No controller. $200. Huh. All right. Well, guys, like I said, go to the go to the um, go to the website. Check it out yourself. Read all the stuff that I didn't read. Read all the stuff I did read because you know I'm just kind of paraphrasing through it. I'm not very good at kind of doing this kind of thing, but yeah. So I mean, as I say across the pond, there's your lot. A two hundred dollar HDMI console that plays all ColecoVision stuff and is supposed to be compatible with all of its accessories, but no controllers. It's got an SD slot that you're not supposed to steal ROMs from for, but it's there, so you can do that too. Um, I don't know. I've never been a big Coleco guy. I, I, I have a small bit of nostalgia for it. Uh, a buddy of mine had a ColecoVision and an Atom system separate, not the one that connected together, and they were literally right fucking next to each other. And I played Buck Rogers, I think it was, on cassette, a lot on that system. Um I don't know. I, I maybe because I'm not a big Coleco fan. I think Coleco is the nicest looking of that three: the Intellivision, uh, Atari VCS, and of course the Coleco Vision. I'd be interested to see where this one goes. I'm not going to follow it as in depth as I probably will the Intellivision, and I have been about the Atari Vox VCS. Um, I think its downfalls right now is timing the market right now. Um, it's 50-50, you know, people are on board with it, but people are also not on board with it. They just think it's stupid, so there's going to be a lot of hate. Whatever, I don't care. Again, look at where Atari got with their crowdfunding. So, is it going to go far? Probably not. But, um, so I think their biggest downfall is the timing of it all, um, especially after that chameleon. Fuck, the name. The name is what's going to kill them. Two, the price might be a little bit much for people, Except for that niche market of people who want this kind of thing. They're the Coleco cats, like Gamester81 is. Um, and if it's doing it crowdfunding, then that may work. You, know, you get enough money to make a bunch of them, have a few extra laying around, and maybe try to build it up that way. I'm not a business guy, so I don't know. And then the crowdfunding. I think that's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But at least they're going Kickstarter where they have to have something working. Hopefully they don't fuck it up like... You know, um, I think those three things right there are already negatives. But it looks interesting. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, I'll definitely keep an eye on this one. It looks interesting. The ColecoVision was a fucking fantastic system. Um, it's just, again, it was a product of bad timing. It, it, it's original in, in incarnation, you know. Um, it just came out at the wrong time. And bleh, I think Coleco could have done pretty well for themselves had they... You know, figured it out a little sooner that they wanted to do that kind of thing. So, guys, that's it. This is a very long, very, I'm sure, boring as fuck thing to watch. Hopefully, you'll go over the, to CollectorVision.com. The link is all the way to the left. It's right now. You can see You can't miss it. Um, if I remember correctly, it was the picture of the, the drawing. I don't know. But let me know down below what you think, you know? Uh, I'd be interested to know what you think. I'm sure most of you have the same mindset as far as the Intellivision and the Atari Box VCS thing. 
But I'd still be interested in knowing what you think. Maybe this one might be the one that changed your mind. I don't know. So, guys, go ahead and leave feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All feedback's positive. Hope everyone's doing well. Until next time, take care. Creep it real. And bye-bye.